So this is joint work with Simon Mathers, who's a, a master student at ETH, Nuria Nurgalieva, who is a PhD student, and she did most of the nice drawings that will show up later, uh, and Renate Renner, who says hi to everyone and apologizes for not being here. Uh, and the idea of this work, so this started because of this famous paper that has the title of the panel that will uh, come after this by Daniela Frauriger and Renate Renner, which says quantum theory cannot describe its own use or the use of itself or uh, something like this, which, which caused quite a bit of controversy. And this is an attempt to make things a bit more clear and more precise. And I'll explain to you how in a bit. So I know that people here have many different backgrounds. And although this is a quantum session, I still try to keep things a bit separated between uh, where you need quantum mechanics and where not. So if you see this little dragon, uh, this means it's a, it's a quantum slide. Otherwise, everyone should be able to follow. OK. So let's first talk about what we mean by agents and by reasoning. Uh, and let's see first why this is important in physics. So in physics, we, we try to, to build a theory of the world as seen from the outside, right? Uh, as, as God would see it. But of course, that's, in order to do this, we, we only have as a basis our own observation. So we're always talking from the point of view of some observers. And the best we can do is talk to each other, compare our observations, uh, and try to, to build a consistent picture of the world. So uh, in order to do this, we need to take into account two different things. One is the, the logic. So we see ourselves as, as kind of uh, abstract, very rational agents, at least while we're doing science, which operate within a, a logical system. And that, and that this is what allows us to make some inferences about each other's knowledge. So I know that Marcus knows that the qubit is up, is in state up. Therefore, I know that the qubit is in state up, for example, because I trust him to be a rational no, uh, agent, to, to share some kind of frame of reference with me, etc. cetera. OK? Um, and then when we're trying to make new inferences about some experimental setting, we start from some common knowledge, if there's a group of us. and this. Common knowledge can be something like the rules of a game, or can be something like the basic physical theory that we all know. And I'll talk a bit more about this later. On the other hand, uh, we need to take into account that we ourselves are physical systems, right? Uh, we have bodies, and we have memories which can undergo some change, and which, in principle, even other agents can uh, poke and tamper with. Okay. Uh, so. We need to be able to describe things like observations and measurements from the perspective of the person who does them and also from the perspective of someone from the outside. So this is in physics, uh, when we think about agents mostly as, as people. Right? And this is used, for example, to derive the th uh, theory of, of relativity by Einstein. It also started from, from the idea of having two different agents traveling at different speeds and what they, how they would relate their own views. Okay. In computer science, uh, let's replace agents with computers. So we still want computers to reason, which means that we want to program them with some kind of uh, consistent enough programs such that they can process information and make some predictions and then communicate these predictions to us. Okay. And if you have a network of computers, be them classical computers or quantum computers or whatnot, they can in particular also take into account each other's uh, knowledge. Okay, so one example is if you want to program something to, to play poker online, and then you can have different, um, different such um, programs playing against each other, and they need to make assessments about what they each other know. Okay. And again, they, they can have some, some common knowledge, which in this case could be the rules of the game. On the other hand, and although uh, this so far is not, uh, is not much of an issue, but we hope to make it more of an issue, uh, is that computers also they have physical memories and processors that are still physical systems and they can be acted on. So in particular, this can be quantum systems, as we all hope to be a uh, commonplace in a few years from now. And what is not uh, thought of much is that computers then can act on each other's memories, just like I can go and, and read the memory of a computer, so we can have computers also doing this to each other. And let me just give an example of of what I mean by agents having different perspectives on the, same, on the same event. And this does not mean that they don't use the same global theory of the world. It just means that they make different uh, 
kind of cutoffs of what is reasonable to keep track of. Okay, so uh, one is just a simple quantum measurement. So imagine that here there's a system uh, in some state psi that Alice wants to measure. Okay, and this is the register of her memory where she'll later uh, keep the outcome of this measurement. Okay, so from her perspective, she knows that she's a big quantum system interacting with this other quantum system. But for practical purposes, she can model this measurement process as something that in the end will produce a classical output, which she later copies to her, to her memory. Okay? And, and this is why, well, this is because, for example, she could think that her measurement apparatus is very large, that she's interacting with a large environment, uh, and she doesn't want to keep track of this all the time, just for, for complexity reasons, for memory reasons. And this is what we do when we go on the lab and we measure the system. We, we just say, okay, we measured a zero. I'll act on from now on as if it was a zero. I don't need to keep track that I'm in a superposition of seeing the two things. However, from the outside, if you take God's view, or in our case, uh, Ursula Le Guin's uh, view, what, what is happening is like, or we have two big systems here that are interacting, and this is a unitary interaction between the two. Well, which can be seen like in a simplified version like, like a C naught. Okay, so where I'm coherently copying whatever is on this, uh, on this system into Alice's memory. So this would, be, uh, this would be an example where agents have a theory of how they see themselves, of how they see other agents, and this is something that we'll want to explore later. Okay. But now let's just think about how we're we going to measure, how we're we going to model this idea of, of an agent. And we do this, so now it's classical again, there's no dragon. And we do this via a very simple protoprocessor, okay? Which, what we wanted to do is to measure some system and apply some reasoning and make some prediction, okay? So the ingredients are, so here's the system measured in, in blue, and all the four lines that are in, in orange, they represent the agent, okay? So it needs a few, a few um, uh, registers. So time will go from left to right, so the first register is where it will save the outcome of this measurement. And then it will have some instructions of what to do if it measures zero. And we'll give a prediction here, and some instructions of what to do if it measures one. Okay. So first we'll have some kind of physical interaction between the agent and the system measured that will produce this outcome register. And then there'll be some interaction between, well, this is like a, a non c naught. Um, it's like a, like a tuffle gate with, uh, with X's on both sides. If, uh, where it goes and ch checks, well, if this is a zero, then I should do whatever says. I go check what's in these instructions to do, what, what should I do if it's zero, and then I update my, my prediction or my action here. And if it's a one, I check that it's a one. Oops, this, this square should be here. I'll go check what this instruction safe to do if it's a one, and then update the prediction. So let's see an example. So suppose what you're doing is just looking at a card that can be a zero or one, okay? So your register for now doesn't say anything, and you have some instructions. So if you see a zero because you're playing a, a very simple game, if you see a zero, you want to later fold. You want to create an, an instruction here for the prediction that says fold. And if you see a one, you want to raise. For now, your prediction doesn't say anything. So you have this physical interaction, very simple, after which we should have here in the register that it's a one. Then it checks if it's a zero. If it was, it would check what this instruction says, but because it's not, it just moves on. There's nothing changing in the prediction. And then it goes and checks if it's a one. Again, this square should be here and it does whatever it says here, so it will raise, okay? So the idea is that if now we're playing a slightly different game, where maybe you, you raise if you see a zero, or you fold if you see a, a one, then you just have to change the way you initialize these conditions here, okay? But the, the, the physical mechanism is all the same. So we can say, well, an agent for this very simple situation is someone that reasons which just says all these registers and reasons in this way via this, physical, um, via this physical evolution. And everything that has to do with common knowledge and with, uh, and with um, the reasoning and the logic that the agents read, 
used to make a prediction. This can be all encoded in, this, in these initial instructions here. Okay. So this is what we'll use later. So in the quantum case, this physical interaction, as we saw, is, can be just a C naught between the system measured, okay, which could be in any state. For example, here's a qubit, now becomes entangled. And this again, uh, this ball should again be there. So it goes and checks if this is a zero, it will do whatever it says here. In this case, zero corresponds to fold and one to raise. And you create, oops, sorry, and you create. in the end, a big, a big state that can be entangled between all of these registers. This mechanism is known to everyone, this, what is the physical evolution that, that each agent undergoes, and the reasons and their own like, uh, special perspectives go into just these instructions of what to do if they see a zero, what to do if they see a one. Okay? So in the end, there will be in a superposition of, what they, of seeing zero and updating the prediction accordingly, and seeing one and updating the prediction accordingly. And now what we put into these logical registers, this is all the, all the things that we may later want to play with and change when you're testing different physical theories. We need the logical system and you need the common knowledge, which is essentially the physical theory that they're using. The, which in the case of a game could be just, just knowing the rules of a game and knowing that it's a good idea to fold if the card is zero and to raise if the card is one. Okay. And you could test this strategy against other strategies uh, run this simulation many times and see which one is the best, right? In the same way, you can apply different versions of quantum theory and different versions of how they see each other being modeled uh, and see if the statements that come out um, make sense or not. Okay. The other ingredient that I will not go so much into here is the idea of when can I combine statements made by other agents, okay? So what are the rules for considering another system uh, just some memory or, or thinking that, or taking the prediction seriously. But we'll see the example. So what we're doing is building this whole software package, which has three ingredients. The first one is everything that is the reasoning rules that we can change. So it's like conditions to make inferences, to um, trust other people, and also what kind of labels should go into some statements like, I make a prediction, but this prediction is only valid between these two times, for example. And then everything that they use, like the physical theory, for example, uh, which version of quantum theory are they using? Are they using uh, a Copenhagen interpretation, or are they using Bohmian mechanics, which is a completely different theory, or are they using a collapse theory, etc.? And also how they see each other working. If you put this all in a package, or two sub-packages, the nice thing is that you can write any experimental protocol in a very agnostic way, where I can write the steps as if, as if it was a recipe for what to do in the lab. So this would be something like, I just say, Alice goes in the lab, she measures this qubit. And I don't have to specify what we mean by measuring the qubit, because this is all treated uh, by, by these packages here. And then, of course, we need, to have a, we need to instantiate this class, which are the agents. So each agent will, have, will tell us like uh, what's the the size of their memory, what's the processor they use, what kind of interactions um, um, model these measurements, and what kind of predictions they can make. So this is what we're doing, and so far we've tested it in the Farrigger-Renner experiment. And I thought that uh, for, for reasons of, of the panel that's coming, I should quickly recap the experiment. So the idea is, so we have Alice, which here is a very nice person, but you can think of her as this quantum circuit that we saw before, okay? She measures this state R that is initially prepared in some state. And as we saw from the outside, this corresponds to her being, becoming entangled with it, okay? Then depending on what she saw, she'll either prepare state zero or state plus of the system S, and she gives it to another agent, uh, Bob, okay? And Bob comes and he measures this qubit, he also has a memory, and now they have a joint state that looks like this, which is essentially a hardy state between the two. And then there's two more agents from the outside which come whoop, and measure Alice and Bob in different bases. Okay, so we can later, during the panel, run the experiment again. And the idea is that using this kind of logic that we saw before, the agents will make some inferences about each other's result, which in the end will end up being contradictory. Okay, so the idea is that 
if they get some results um, OK, he'll, he'll reach the, the conclusion that oh, Ursula thought, that Bob thought, that Alice thought that I would get fail. And then this, is the, and this will be the paradox, OK? Now, <laughs> of course, I was rushing through it. Uh, and I don't expect it to have followed. But the general idea is that you have these four agents that use the same physical theory, but they model themselves and each other in a different way. Okay? So for themselves, they think, when I make a measurement, I can forget about being in a superposition. But for others, they think, um, well, in some settings, it's, it's good to think of them as an isolated quantum system undergoing some evolution. Okay. And, uh, and the idea is that with this software, then we can play with these assumptions. Okay. And this is what we're doing. So in case you, you prefer the circuit language, this is what's going on in a high level. So there was this system that was in the state that Alice measured, so she got entangled with it. Then depending on the outcome, she either applied a Hadamard or not on another system, which she gave to Bob, and Bob then measured it. And then someone came and measured uh, Alice in this basis and someone came and measured uh, Bob in this basis. And then using some kind of trust between their statements, they reached a contradiction, OK? Now, this is a very simplified circuit. And what we're doing now is to really apply different versions of quantum theory. So if you apply Copenhagen, we get a contradiction. If you apply, depending on the version of many worlds, um, so in some versions, you cannot make any statement at all which means that if you test a different experimental protocol, like I just measure a qubit now, I obtain zero, and five minutes later I want to ask what's the state of my qubit now, I cannot conclude that it's still zero. So this doesn't work. If you, get, if you test a collapse theory, of course you don't, um, you don't get a, a contradiction because you don't have this idea of seeing each other as, as undergoing a unitary evolution. Uh, and if you apply Bowman mechanics, what happens is something strange like, um, when Ursula makes a measurement, then Bob's memory changes. Okay. So this is the th kind of things we can test. And the other things we can test are different conditions for, um, for logic. Okay. And this means, well, maybe we should not be able to change statements like this. Maybe there's some condition for why Bob, at this point in time, should not be able to make any statement about, about uh, Alice's reasoning five seconds ago. Okay, but then we need to, the challenge then is to try to come up with a, a consistent set of rules that also passes a test when applied to more simple scenarios. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's it for now. So when this is ready, which we hope will be late this summer, beginning of autumn, then we'll make all the software available. And then the idea is that you can go and play and um, plug in your, your favorite version of logic or your favorite version of quantum theory, and then tell us what's wrong with us. OK, that's all. Thank you. <laughs>